Hello, I'm Sean Kent Hayashi. In this video, you'll learn what being tactful or diplomatic is and why it is an important competency if you want to become a star performer, grow to the next level, or become a more inspiring leader. I help leaders and teams become high performing together. I'm an executive coach and a high performing teams consultant. I work with organizations of all sizes, from industry leading giants to family businesses and entrepreneurial startups. My team has identified 25 competencies needed for leaders and aspiring leaders to grow, thrive, and lead collaborative, innovative, resilient teams. Today, we're going to cover the competency of being tactful or we might call it being diplomatic. Let's dive in. Being tactful is effectively handling difficult or sensitive issues. When we work with people across hierarchical, functional, or national borders, it's vital that we understand and are aware of cultural and organizational issues. Being tactful does not mean that we don't talk about the real issues. Instead, it means that we do talk about the real issues in a way that the receiver can hear the conversation. In other words, we talk about it in a way that the receiver can hear the feedback, the message. I deliver a presentation on sparking a feedback revolution. And in that, I share an experience that I had with my own boss many years ago. Bob, my boss, stopped by my cubicle one morning and said that he had a book on his desk that he thought I would really enjoy reading. He invited me to stop by any time that day to pick up the book. He told me that he would be in an all day meeting and that his assistant knew I would be stopping by. Later, when I did go to Bob's office to pick up that book, I discovered next to it was a list. At the title of the list, it said Sean's flaws. In other words, this is how Bob chose to give me feedback. We can laugh now, today, at this scenario with my boss, but at the time I was stunned. Bob did not have the courage or the communication skills to talk with me about his experience of working with me directly. And I didn't talk with Bob about why he chose to communicate with me in this way, because at that time, in my 20s, I didn't have the skills to address conflict and I didn't trust that it would go well if I did. Bob was very passive. He had a pattern of skirting issues. He was not being tactful or finding a way to discuss his challenges and concerns directly. Now, let's contrast Bob with somebody completely different, Anne. Anne was known to be a hothead who would explode when she didn't like what was happening. To say Anne was domineering was an understatement. She could be a grenade. One day, Anne came into our cubicle area screaming about how mm, someone had done something wrong. I don't remember the specific details, but what I do remember is that we were all afraid of Anne. No one wanted to be the victim of her verbal attacks. And no one wanted to work with her because of how she lashed out and publicly criticized her team members. Both Bob and Ann are examples of someone who has not learned how to be tactful in discussing their concerns and emotions. Today, when I coach managers and leaders like Bob and Ann, I share frameworks that enable them to ease into a discussion, to talk about the real issues. In my book, 
Conversations for Change, 12 Ways to Say It Right When It Matters Most, I outline 12 different types of conversations people need to know how to create in professional workplaces today. For each of the 12 conversation types, I share the specific how-tos to begin the right type of conversation. I'll share a few of these now so you can begin to use them today. One of my favorite is the opener, what would need to exist for us to, and now you fill in the blank with what you want to see happen. In other words, with someone who's often late for meetings, I might say with a curious and warm tone of voice, hey, I'm curious, what would need to exist for us to begin meetings on time? Or I could say, what would need to exist for us to add William to the agenda for our meeting on Friday. This opening line enables you to focus on the outcomes that you want to create without going into a tirade about what was not done correctly and without sweeping the issue under the rug, ignoring it. Another tactful communication tool to use when you are holding someone accountable to something they're agreeing to do is to say to them, I'm hearing you say that you're going to do X, Y, Z. Did I get that right? And, and you're willing and able to do X, Y, Z, right? Great. Then ask, how will I know when it's done? This sequence enables the other person to take note that they are agreeing to do something and that they are now agreeing that they will be accountable for the outcomes. By saying, how will I know when you've done it? They may say, I'll call you and let you know what happened. Or they might say, I'll text you a picture when it's complete. Now this helps you to close the loop so that the accountability is clearly owned by the person agreeing to take the action. A client of mine recently agreed to hang an issues board in a team meeting room and to begin a daily 10 minute meeting to identify the priorities and issues that they would be working on each day. After he said that he would do this, I used the sequence. I said, so John, I hear you saying you're going to hang the issues board so everyone can see it and they can help in prioritizing those issues. You'll lead a morning meeting to ensure that everyone knows the priorities for the day. Did I get that right? John then says, yes. I say, okay, you're saying you're both willing and able to do this within the next week. I got it right? Again, John says, yes, this is highlighting for him. It's pointing out for him what he has agreed to. Then I say, John, how will I know it's happening? He says, hey, Sean, I'll email you a photo of the issues board hanging on the wall. And in our next coaching meeting, I'll update you on how the morning meetings are going. I say, great. This is an example of a tactful accountability conversation with somebody who may be struggling to be accountable. If John does not follow through, then I need to create a conversation for conflict resolution with him because we are then at cross purposes with his agreement. When we don't have well-developed conflict resolution skills and emotional intelligence, we may shy away from tactful conversations we need to initiate if you have not watched my videos on those topics, we will link them below so you can find them easily to watch next. People who are well-developed in this competency build trusting relationships and networks with key people of influence. They provide advice, counsel, and mentoring on organizational issues. They also utilize both formal and informal networks intentionally to obtain support and achieve results. They express the context of a problematic situation in a non-confrontational and positive manner. If you would like guidance and direction, accountability, in learning new skills for yourself or your whole team, 
I'd be delighted to talk with you. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. To learn more about The Professional Development Group, please check out our website and sign up for our newsletter at theprofessionaldevelopmentgroup.com. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you in the next video.